Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio. So today, we're going to be talking a different topic, a unique kind of topic. We're going to be talking about how to qualify for the Pokemon World Championships. Just to be clear, this video will not qualify you for the World Championships. What it will do is give you an idea of the kind of things you need to do in order to make your dream of qualifying for Worlds a reality. Now, this is a topic that was put to me by the lovely sarcastic lawyer, Legally Sarcastic, on Twitter. He is one of the top supporters over at Patreon, patreon.com slash ptcgradio. Now, the majority of supporters over there, they get bonus podcasts, whereby every week you ask questions, I answer them on the bonus pod. But the top level of supporters, like the lovely Legally Sarcastic, get to say, Wossy, make me a video. And this is what he suggested. And I thought, you know what? I can make a good video about this. Now, the first thing, and this is going to be kind of obvious, but I'm going to go there anyway. Make good Pokemon decks. If you don't make good decks, you ain't going to do well. Zoroark. Boswell, Rayquaza, these are all decks that have had success in the past. They are good decks. And I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Rogue decks, counter decks, like the video we talked about the other day, these are fun. And a lot of the time, players get a real sense of satisfaction doing well with an underrated deck. I certainly do, and I've played a lot of weird rogue decks. But the reality is, if you look at the top performers, tournament after tournament, they're playing the big decks. So you might be thinking, well, see, how do I find out what these decks are? How do I know about the good decks? Well, firstly, I do videos about them on this channel. When a good deck comes around, I will show you a video about it. I'll explain how it works, and I'll give you a list. The thing is, you can't just get a deck list. You need to understand how the deck works. Channels like this, and there are others, but I'm going to suggest you probably use this one, <laughs> will help you to play those decks. If you want a deck list, honestly, I'm going to suggest Limitless.com. And the reason, very simply, is they are my favourite. When I want to know what decks are doing well at recent tournaments, that's the website I go to. When I want to go and get a deck list for one of those decks, that's the website I go to. They will list out all of the good decks at the moment, they will show you what decks are good, and any time they can, they will give you a deck list. And if you're a newer player especially, you should learn by playing other people's decks. The more you play, the more decks you play, the more games you play with a particular deck, you will naturally start making changes. And most of the time, just picking up a deck and playing it won't give you the optimal experience because it doesn't fit your play style. You need to discover that by playing a lot of games. But you need to play good decks. If you don't play good decks, you're not going to get to Worlds. For newer players especially, find good decks... Take other people's lists, test them out, and play as many games as you possibly can. That's how you end up doing well at tournaments. At the recent World Championships, a bunch of Australian players came around with a deck using the Baby Boswell Hayneck and Garboda and Shrine of Punishment. It was an unforeseen deck. It was a deck that countered a metagame. It was a deck we didn't see coming. And they did extremely well with it. But here's the thing. That was a group of players, all of which had qualified for the World Championships. So they had that knowledge. They had that base. Newer players are unable to be able to just jump straight into that. You need to build up to that. The second thing, and this is just as important as the first, test, test, test 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 i'm going to do a video in the next couple days about what to play after rotation that is going to give you a taste of the top decks or at least what i think are going to be the top decks moving forward you can also look at tournament results over on limitless i should mention it's the only website run by the world champion so you know nice to support that kind of website also, it's not filled with ads like so many other websites. There's so many good things about Limitless. I should mention I'm not affiliated with Limitless. I don't work for them. I don't work with them. I'm not sponsored by them. I have no connection to them other than I think they're great. And it's the website I use personally. 
nothing else. There we go. So in terms of testing, you need to test as much as you can, with as many people as you can, with as many decks as you can. In 2012, I got through the last chance qualifier. That was a tournament they used to have the day before Worlds, back before the day one and day two structure, whereby you could turn up without an invite, enter a single elimination tournament, and if you survived, you got through. I did it by playing a Celebi Mewtwo Tornadoes Terrakian deck, and I just tested. I tested the mirror match playing the same deck over and over and over again. The other big deck at the time was Darkrai. So I tested against this over and over and over and over again. I played, and they really were the only two big decks at the time that I was worried about. And I knew that from checking tournament results. And I tested again and again and again. And I refined my list until I could beat both of those decks most of the time. Had I just picked up that deck and played a few games, I would have lost in round three. Or maybe even round one. But because I knew what I was doing and I tested, and there is no substitute for testing. The best players in the world test the most. Robin Schultz, who just won Worlds, he tests a ridiculous amount. Todd Reklev, who's won three of the international championships we've had so far, tests a ridiculous amount. The more you test the better you get. The more people you test with, the better you get. There is PTCGO, the official online client of the Pokemon trading card game, but you need to be a bit careful because sometimes people play decks on there that are just trying to win challenges within the game, as in PTCGO. People test out weird things on there. It's good for knowing if your deck works, and especially if you can play with other players and you know what they're playing, that's really good. Random games on PTCGO are very hit and miss. They're good for just seeing if your deck sets up and works, but you will play against some weird decks that are not necessarily representative of what you're going to play against if you play in an actual tournament. Just a word of warning there. Test with as many decks as you can against as many decks as you can. Because the more decks you test against, the better it is. You might have no intention of playing Necrozma Malamar in a tournament. But if you've played 20 games with Necrozma Malamar, you will understand so much better how that deck works. So you will be so much better at playing against it because you can put yourself in the position of the Necrozma Malamar player and you can think, if I was them, what would be the worst situation right now? So you've found a good deck, you've tested loads. This is where it gets a bit simpler. Go to tournaments. There is a tournament locator on the official Pokemon website. I'll pop a link in the description so it's easy to find. Search for tournaments. Go to as many as you can. You've got league challenges. These are very little. League Cups, these are bigger. Regionals and special events, the difference is special events do not give cash prizes, regionals do. And then you've got internationals. Now there are best finish limits, I did a video about all of this, I'll pop a link in the description. But essentially, you get 15 points for winning a League Challenge, 50 for winning a League Cup, 200 for winning a regional or special event, 500 for winning an internationals. We don't know what the qualification limits are going to be. Last year, it was 250 in Europe, 400 in the USA, North America as a whole. We'll have to wait and see this year. They do often change it to try and make sure they get the number of people they want competing at Worlds. Clearly, you want to win regionals and internats. But if the qualification is 250 points and you can get 50 from winning a League Cup, that's, that's pretty good. In the early days especially, play in every tournament you can because you ain't going to win them all and it's good experience. I should mention there's also a day two invite. So Worlds is split into day one and day two. Day one is everyone. Day two is either the top X number of people, more on that in a second, or you have to go through day one with two or fewer losses. So if it is eight rounds, you need to win six games. If you get six wins, two losses, you're in. Five wins, three losses, you are out. 
unless you're in the top X players. Now, in Europe, it's the top 22. In North America, it's the top 16. This is based on championship points for the entire year. And those people get their flights and accommodation paid for them at Worlds, and they go straight to day two. If you want a day two invite, you are going to have to play in a lot of tournaments and get a lot of championship points. This will vary year on year. It might not work the first time. You might not get an invitation to the World Championships the first time you try. But most players, if they keep trying and improving their skill, will get to Worlds if they put the time and effort in. But the key point here is that you need to love the game. If you don't enjoy playing the game, you're never going to get to Worlds. And even if you do, you're not going to enjoy it well enough. You need to love the game to go to all these tournaments. But it really is, at its essence, very, very simple. There is a three-step process to get to Worlds. Play good decks. Test as much as you can. Play in every tournament you can make. And if you do those three things, it might not be the first year. But you'll end up at Worlds eventually. I know for some of you people out there, you probably knew a lot of this. But I know there's a lot of players have asked me this over the years. Plus, you know, lovely chap requested it on Patreon. And it'd be rude to say no. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. If you've got any other tips for getting to Worlds, chuck them in the comment section. If you've got any questions, chuck them in the comment section. And hopefully myself or somebody else will get around there. Let me know, ladies and gentlemen. Go nuts, but be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and maybe even request your own video, well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you would go to patreon.com slash ptcgradio. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.